This video covers the content of the SAP Cloud Platform Workflow Virtual Event, content which is available on GitHub. And specifically, it covers the content for exercise two, deploying the workflow tools. So this exercise has a number of steps, six steps. These steps will take us through downloading uh, a zip file from the SAP Samples Cloud Process Visibility GitHub repo. We'll understand why we're doing that in a second. We're going to bring that downloaded project into the SAP Business Application Studio, into App Studio. We're going to have a look inside that project, look at the, the contents to understand what exactly it is we're dealing with. We're going to deploy, build and deploy those project contents to the SAP Cloud Platform. And then finally, go to the Fury Launchpad site that has been set up and deployed to with content uh, from that actual project deployment. We're going to look at that and get to the workflow tiles that we'll be using, okay, in terms of workflow tools. So first of all, let's start with step one. So in this GitHub repository, which will open up here, we'll see uh, it's got a number of release artifacts. If we look at the uh, releases area here, we can see that it's got a number of artifacts, release artifacts, one of which is very interesting for us. That's the BPM services FLP, a zip file containing a number of different artifacts that we're going to need to set up our workflow tools on SAP Cloud Platform. So the first thing we have to do is to download that file, BPM Services FLP. I've already downloaded that file and unpack it because it's a zip file. And what we'll get when we unpack it is you know, a number of different files organized into basically what are two separate directories. So let's have a look at the actual download itself, which is here. We've got the downloaded zip file and I've expanded that zip file, unpacked the zip file into my local uh, file system here. But what we need to do is we need to open up our App Studio and drag the folder, the project folder into the App Studio. So let's have a look how that's described. We need to go to the Explorer perspective which we've got here. And then we want to open up a workspace. So we've only just in the previous exercise set up our App Studio. So we now need to specify a folder uh, to open as our workspace. So let's do that right now. By default, it offers us a projects directory, which is a directory within our user space here in our home directory, home user project. So let's select that. And now we have in the Explorer on the left-hand side, a pointer to the fact that we've got our workspace opened at the projects directory. So let's just flip back to our file system locally and grab this unpacked set of directories and drag it into our Explorer here. And at this stage, we can see that that entire directory structure with all the files and all the directories has been brought into our App Studio uh, dev space. So we can close this local file system explorer now and continue from here. So now, once we've got the project inside the App Studio, let's have a little bit of a look around to see what we've got. This step three shows us really, or talks us through some of the important files and directories in this project. For example, the first thing we see in the list here and the first thing we our eyes fall upon perhaps in the project uh, structure is a file called MTA YAML. Now, MTA stands for multi-target application and it's a definition file that defines a number of modules and a number of resources that when built and organized into 
an archive file can be deployed to the sap cloud platform and processes started appropriately as we can see here we've got two modules described in the mta yaml file and these two modules here tie up exactly with these two directories as we can see in the description in this step three the bpm flp module and corresponding directory contain a number of definitions as we can see here in the common data model describing what tiles and applications should be loaded as content into a fury launchpad and flp site so that's one of the modules this module will start when once deployed the content deployment will take place and then the process will finish will stop we can see the details of what actually will happen by looking in the package json here we can see that the package json effectively describes the use of the portal content deployer which is a node module from sap the other module specified in the mta yaml is called bpm services flp underscore app router and that corresponds directly to this directory here and we can see in the package.json for this directory that this is running the app router again another node module from sap in the sap namespace and as it as described in step three we can see that this directory here this module represents the app router based uh, traffic handler and application that serves the fury launchpad site and the apps within it we also have a number of other files including for example the excess security.json this file is used to define the settings when creating an instance of the authorization and trust management service also known as excess uaa so now that we've got an overview a very high level overview of the contents of the project we've just imported into the app studio we can now proceed to step four which is building this multi-target application archive so that we can deploy it if you've used the web ide the sap web ide in the past this step and the way we do it here will be familiar to you we can use the context menu right click on the mta.yaml file and select the option build mta that will open up a new task in the app studio that will compile the contents of this entire project package into an archive that we can then deploy to sap cloud platform as we can see and as described here in this task window we can actually see at the top here the task or the the command that was invoked when we when we executed that task it's using the build tool mbt and it's specifying this bpm services flp project folder as what to use as the source for the build towards the end of the process towards the end of the output we can see that it says that an mta archive has been generated inside the bpm services flp project directory structure in a new directory called mta underscore archives which is the default name for uh, mta archive files or directories that contain mta archive files and the file name is called bpm services flp 001.mtar let's have a look at that here there it is so this is the archive file that we can now deploy to sap cloud platform and we can do that in a, a very similar way using the context menu in a later exercise we'll be doing the build and deploy in a different way so let's use the context menu to deploy the archive to sap cloud platform now 
because in a previous exercise we've already connected our dev space our app studio dev space to the sap cloud platform cloud foundry organization and dev space itself this proceeds without asking us for any other information now Remember that there are two modules being deployed. These two modules each rely upon, depend upon, require a number of resources. So the BPM services FLP app router module relies upon the resources listed here. And in the same way, the BPM FLP module relies on a very similar list of resources, a slightly, slightly shorter list described here. All of the resources that both the BPM services FLP app router module requires, combined with the services that the BPM FLP module requires, the resources, they're all described here. And what's happening in the deployment is that any services that need to be created are being created right now any services that need to be created but are already existing like the ones we set up with the booster in the previous exercises they're being checked and once that takes place we should be finished okay so that's the services created and or processed and once all those services have been created and processed those those required resources then the two modules themselves, BPM services FLP app router and BPM FLP are staged and started. Once that's done, the deployment task is complete. So there we go. We have near the end, as it shows us here in the, uh, at the end of step five, we've got a message that tells us that the application BPM services FLP app router is started and it's also available at that particular domain name that particular URL effectively if you imagine HTTPS prefixed so the next thing we want to do is to go to that service which will hopefully present us with a Fury Launchpad site with the workflow tiles and also other tiles as well as we'll see rather than just take this host name here as we see described at the end of step five we could use that URL directly to get to the FLP site but for the sake of learning we're going to take a slightly more long-winded but hopefully more interesting route as well so we learn how things are connected along the way so this is now step six so we're going to open up in a new browser tab and we're going to go to the trial sub account home. We've already got that actually here. So we're there already. If we refresh that page, we should now see the number of service instances increase and also the number of applications increase. So previously, I think this was five and we had no applications. If we jump to the spaces overview we can see a similar sort of information summary. We can see that some memory has been consumed from the quota and some service instance quota has been consumed as well. And there's one application started and one application stopped. Those two items here, one started, one stopped, relate directly to the two modules we were just looking at in the MTA.yaml. Okay, so let's now, as instructed here, select the dev space. And the first thing we're shown if we select a dev space, if we select a space, are the applications. And as we can see, we have two applications representing the two modules we saw described in the MTA.yaml. And as expected, the first one in the list here, BPM FLP, was the content deployer. If we look here, at the output from the deployment, we can see here the logs relating to BPM FLP. And we can see that 
there was a deploy task executed. And once that deploy task was complete, that was the end of what we wanted BPM FLP to do. So that's why it's in a stopped state. However, the BPM services FLP app router application or module is, as we can see here again, the app router based module or the app router based application. So that is now correctly listening for incoming requests, incoming HTTP requests. Okay. So now let's continue our journey to find that URL. If we select the services, service instances menu item, which is this thing here, we can see the instances of the services, some of which were created by the booster in the previous exercise. For example, the ones beginning default underscore, but the BPM services FLP HTML5 repo runtime service instance, and also the UAA BPM services service instance, they were created as a direct result of us deploying our project because the MTA YAML file described those services or those service instances as being required. So they were created automatically for us. Now, notice as well, in the reference, referencing applications column, we can see that the BPM services FLP app router is an app that references this service, this service, and all these last four services as well. So we can select that and see that, for example, there's a binding between the BPM services FLP app router application and all these service instances. We can see much more information about the application, but let's go to the overview of the application as described here. And within the application routes section of the application overview page in the SAP Cloud Platform cockpit, we see a URL, a clickable URL. And yes, this is exactly the same URL that we saw in this message here. So now let's select this URL and this will take us via the app router to the Fury Launchpad site that's been defined and set up by the rest of the content in the module that we deployed. And that's it for this exercise. Thanks for watching.